downloading iTunes movies to your iPhone or iPad. And you know what? This is another very difficult thing that I've had a problem with over the years. I'm probably doing it the wrong way. I download them straight from the iPad, which is really not the greatest thing to do. It takes forever. The downloads time out all the time. They, they, get, they freeze up. But I don't like using iTunes anymore because look at it this way. This is the biggest thing people need to realize. The, um, if, obviously, iTunes, iTunes, it's not even called iTunes on your phone anymore. It's called the TV app. Um, but they, they all, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Even if iTunes doesn't disappear by the time we get a portless phone, you're still going to need to get used to a portless phone. Remember, if you buy a portless iPhone that has like a terabyte worth of information, the only way you can do anything is by um, using Wi-Fi. Maybe they'll develop Bluetooth, but Bluetooth isn't a great transfer. And um, that means people are going to be stuck with wireless anyways. So you're going to get used to the fact that you're going to have to use something without a wire like iTunes. Now, iTunes sounds like a great idea because I've done it before a long, long time ago. You download all your movies to iTunes, and then you send them straight to your iPhone or your iPad or whatever you want to send it whatever Apple device is compatible. The only problem is is that um, it's, it's just, it's not gonna be like that forever. So you might as well get used to the way I'm telling you how to do it, which is to do it by going onto the iPad and the iPhone itself and downloading them. It's slow, it sucks, and it can take days to get all the movies you want to go on your iPad. But at least you can do it without iTunes. And you're gonna eventually have to get used to that. There is no way in hell Apple is going to give you a data connection that's going to connect to your, um, to your um, what's it called, your computer to run iTunes if, if you have a portless phone. The reason why I say that is because they'll open up the door for people to jailbreak the phone again. So it's going to be completely cut out. I don't think there's going to be any data, data ports on the outside of the phone for anything. That's, that's another problem. How are they going to run diagnostics on a phone that's busted? They must have something for diagnostics if you bring it to Apple. But other than that, forget about it. They're not going to give you... A, they don't care if you can't use iTunes. They're not going to give it to you. Too many people have hacked the phone and used features that will... I hate to say it, but the jailbreaks probably have features that are well and be above what you would get on... Um, well, you can right now. That's why people hack it, but that's going to be gone eventually, and people are going to have to get used to it. Wireless technology, and there's going to be no data port for the wireless technology either. But to tell you the truth, I haven't used iTunes in years. Well before I got the X, it was the last time I used the iTunes, because now you don't need it. Before, I used to be forced to use iTunes to connect to it, so I could use... um updates like I, so I could update the phone but then eventually the phone came with an update where you could do it over wi-fi so that that helped everything because now no one needs to use itunes there's very few people that actually still use it i believe people that have ipods are probably the only people that use it some people might be using them right now for their phones but it's a stupid thing because once everything goes portless which i predict within the next two to three years you're gonna have to be stuck with um you're basically going to have to be stuck with... It's going to be stuck with it. I know I'm losing words. I'm speaking too fast. I, I really don't like this idea. Apple's been doing it for a while, though. They've been saying portless iPhone, portless iPhone. It's not going to happen right away, but it's going to happen. And people are going to get stuck with a wireless device that they can't use on their computer. It doesn't matter to me, but I'm sure there's quite a few people out there that want to use the computer. And forget it. You won't be able to. And if anything, if, if, if they do anything like give you a cord with a phone, you're probably going to be stuck with like USB-C. Now, they're saying they're, done, they're trying to not comply with that. They want to stay with their lightning cable. But there, it's good, probably going to be a two-way USB-C cable. Meaning that a lot of people won't have USB-C on their computers because they hold on to them too long and they buy a cheaper one. And if that's the case, well, then you'll have no way to get it on your computer with that either. So magnetic charging. Ah. You know, people don't really even want... This is how... People are going to ask me this question. Biggest question probably in this whole thing. 
Why am I downloading the videos when I can just stream them off of my powerful Wi-Fi or 5G connection? Well, first of all, there's quite a few places I go where 5G is not good or non-existent. And um, if I go on an airplane, neither that, that exists or Wi-Fi. There are quite a few places you can go where you need to have something downloaded to your dev device. And who the hell wants to watch a movie and see it get backed up? Even if you do have a real good connection, there's a chance while you're watching a movie that you might be watching it and it might buffer for a second or it might do something you don't want it to do. I mean, hey, Netflix does it. Doesn't mean Apple's immune. That They could do the same thing. And it happens the most on Netflix, though. Every time you watch Netflix, you're watching it. Everything's going great. And then the quality degrees for like 10 seconds. And it goes, I hate when it does that. That's why streaming can never be for me. Um, I just, don't, I can't, I don't like interruptions in quality. I hate it. Um, so, all right, we'll see what happens with Apple. But, you know, if anyone wants to make a choice, my ultimate choice would be to um, stop my idea and start doing everything on your device itself. Don't keep using iTunes because it's going to disappear and you're going to be disappointed that day because you have to be prepared. This isn't some kind of change where you can just change and everything will be okay. You have to be prepared and know how to do everything ahead of time. Um, before I started using, shall I say, the device itself to download videos and stuff, it took me a while to figure out how to do everything. And it's really not that hard. All you do is click download. But then there's something where the download tray is. Then I have to wash the downloads because they break down and don't down continue to download. They shut off and all that stuff. Right now I'm doing a download for, oh, oh boy, there we go. It always tells you it's unable to download and retry. I hate that. And I hate that because sometimes when you let it download over overnight, um, you wake up and there's like five or six of those and you have to wait again for those six videos to download. Okay, bye-bye.